So folks, I just have to ask, my God, who does this? Trump asked Putin for advice about whether the U.S. should help arm Ukraine. Does that sound like something an intelligent person would do? This is coming to us by way of the New York Times, and this meeting that Putin had with Trump was in Hamburg in 2017, according to the New York Times. And what do you think Putin said? No, that's exactly what he said. No, you should not essentially arm Ukraine. And Rex Tillerson, who was a secretary of state at the time, said he called this the KGB shtick. Um, he basically said, we need to change. We've got to work to change the president's mind on Ukraine. Um, I mean, this is just, uh, is it just because he was new to the office? I mean, he obviously knew that Putin attacked Ukraine. So by asking Putin, what should we do with regard to Ukraine? Should we give them arms? He he kind of set that up for an obvious answer, don't you think? I mean, it's obvious to most everybody that Putin would say, no, do not arm Ukraine. But this is something that Trump believed he should ask. Stable genius. He's been called a stable genius, I think, by himself. So, folks, we're not going to have someone like Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State next time. And this is what is most scary to me about the potential of a Trump second administration. You're not going to have people like Rex Tillerson. They're going to put the brakes on Donald Trump should this happen again. It's going to be all of the yes men, which is cause for concern. So we've got this report coming out here, folks. Evidently, Melania's got a memoir that she's written. It's coming out tomorrow. It's called Melania. Due to hit the shelves Tuesday, she recounts the moment, get this, in autumn of 2019 when her husband, then President Donald Trump, summoned her to watch the pursuit of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi play out. She says, I was caught off guard when I received a call informing me that the president wanted to see me in the Oval Office. She says, I was directed to join him in the Situation Room, a first and unique experience for me. There she joined the likes of Vice President Mike Pence, Chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley, and Defense Secretary Mark Esper to watch and witness the Delta Force operation as Trump whispered to her, watch this incredible action at work. She says, this pivotal moment was one that Donald wanted to share with me. So we already know that Trump has no regard for top secret information. It's been all over Mar-a-Lago the ballroom, the bathroom. I mean, where hasn't it been? And now you've got this situation. So total disregard for security clearances and anything top secret, folks. And then on top of that, get this, Donald Trump campaign in Juneau, Wisconsin yesterday and rebuked his stupid campaign staff for showing the wrong picture as he once more attempted to answer liberal mockery over his dwindling crowd sizes. So they showed the wrong picture of a crowd that wasn't that big. And Donald Trump got really upset about it. And I'm supposed to be the one that's got Trump derangement syndrome and he's worried about crowd size. And then he tweeted this out at 2.44 a.m. this morning. He says the great people of North Carolina are being stood up by Harris and Biden who are giving almost all of the FEMA money to illegal migrants in what is now considered to be the worst rescue operation of the history of the U.S., which is B.S., total BS. And then you've got something like this, folks. So this is Senator Todd Budd, who's out there saying stuff like this about the FEMA money, parroting what Donald Trump was saying. Uh, misplaced allocations, you know, whether it's money, a billion dollars that's been allocated for illegals that's not coming here to Western North Carolina or the other states. We realize this is a multi-state region. I think this is probably the worst hit area. So it's, it's misallocated time, misallocated dollars, and a, a lot of bureaucratic hand-wringing but it's here. It's No, it isn't. Folks, I mean, this is, this is a lie, taking advantage of people who are in need, people who have been damaged, people who, whose homes have been washed away, taking that despair and destruction and using it for your own advantage. And I'm the one that's got Trump derangement syndrome. This is a man who's taking advantage of the, the malaise, and it's what they do. That's what autocrats like Donald Trump do, taking advantage of the malaise, twisting it around, making it work to his advantage. So what is he going to do with this new hurricane that we've got now, this eye-watering report that we've had that's showing that the hurricane has gone from 60 
miles an hour to 150 miles an hour. What is Donald Trump going to do to manipulate that scenario to his advantage? But before we get there, folks, and end this, I just have to let you listen to this. So evidently, this is now good versus evil, according to Lara Trump. Have a listen to this. She just said this here, over the we weekend. We can all feel it. This is no longer a fight between Republican versus Democrat, left versus right. It is good versus evil. And good is going to win this battle. Lady. Yeah, good is going to win this battle, folks. The person that's doing the evil right now is Donald Trump, middle, maligning FEMA, trying to make it look like they're incapable, taking advantage of people in the malaise that they've, they've had to endure in this hurricane. That's evil. When you take that and you try to manipulate it for your own benefit, folks. Yes, Larry Trump, good is going to win this election. Beware of the silent majority out there and they're in your own party. Good will prevail. Till next time, folks.